What would happen if your body didn't have bones at all? You'd be nothing more than a puddle of muscles and skin on the floor. It's the bones that make you look tall or short, broad or thin, and give your body symmetry. You probably know that an adult has 206 bones, but did you know that when you were born, you had around 270 delicate bones? As you grow, many of these bones fuse together, forming the firm and harder bones that make you strong. But here's a question. Can you guess which bone in your body is the strongest, even stronger than steel? Think about it and drop your answer in the comments. For now, let's study this amazing framework of bones called the skeleton system. Humans have an endoskeleton, a framework of bones located inside the body, beneath the skin and muscles. But did you know that skeletons don't always have to be inside? Sounds strange, right? A skeleton on the outside of the body, that's called an exoskeleton. It isn't found in humans, but in insects, crabs, and many arthropods, and it's mostly made of a tough material called chitin. There's also another type called a hydrostatic skeleton. This isn't made of bones at all, but of water. It's found in soft-bodied marine animals like jellyfish, hydra, and worms. Their bodies are mostly water, and the fluid pressure provides them with structure and support. But today, our focus is on the endoskeleton of humans, the remarkable system of bones that gives us shape, support, and strength. As I said, the skeleton is made up of bones, but bones alone are not enough. At the ends of bones, there is a smooth tissue called cartilage. This acts like a cushion, making the joints movable and reducing friction or abrasion when bones rub against each other. Now, bones don't just float separately. They are held together by strong connective tissues called ligaments, which attach one bone to another. On the other hand, bones are connected to muscles by another type of connective tissue called tendons. In simple terms, ligaments join bone to bone, tendons join muscle to bone, and cartilage protects the ends of bones. This teamwork allows your skeleton to move smoothly, helping you walk, run, and do your daily activities. Now, the human skeleton can be divided into two main parts, axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton. The axial skeleton includes the skull, vertebral column, ribs, and sternum. First is the skull. Remember this. The skull is made up of cranium and facial bones, which means head and face. The cranium means the head part. It has eight bones in total. Out of these, two are paired and four are unpaired. Paired bones are parietal and temporal. Unpaired bones are frontal, occipital, sphenoid, and ethmoid. Cranium has eight bones. Now come the facial bones. These are 14 in total. Out of these, six are paired and two are unpaired. Paired facial bones are maxilla, zygomatic, nasal, lacrimal, palatine, and inferior nasal concha. Unpaired facial bones are mandible and voma. So, facial bones are 14 in total. Now, let's add them together. Skull has 22 bones. The next part is the vertebral column. It extends from the skull down to the pelvis to form the backbone. These bones together make a hollow tube inside, which protects the spinal cord. If you notice, your central nervous system is protected by the axial skeleton, the skull protects the brain, and the vertebral column protects the spinal cord. Normally, the vertebral column has four curvatures. These curves provide more strength and flexibility than a straight column. The vertebral column is made up of 33 vertebrae in total, and interestingly, they are named according to their location in the body. The first curvature is the cervical region, present in the neck. It has seven vertebrae. The first two have special names, the atlas and the axis. These help you nod and rotate your head. Below the neck is the thoracic region. These are 12 vertebrae, and ribs are attached to them from the back side. Together, they form the thoracic cavity which protects delicate organs like the heart and lungs. 
Next is the lumbar region, in the belly area. It has five vertebrae. These are the strongest because they support most of the body weight. Finally comes the pelvic region, with nine vertebrae in total. These fuse to form two sets, the sacrum and the coccyx. The sacrum is formed by the fusion of the anterior five vertebrae. The coccyx, or tailbone, is formed by the fusion of the posterior four vertebrae. Now let's move to the rib cage and the sternum. The rib cage is made up of 12 pairs of ribs, so in total you have 24 ribs. These ribs are curved bones attached at the back to the thoracic vertebrae. Together, they form a bony cage around the chest. The ribs are not all the same. Based on their attachment in the front, they are divided into three groups. The first seven pairs are called true ribs. They are directly attached to the sternum through cartilage. The next three pairs are called false ribs. They are not directly attached to the sternum. Instead, they connect to the cartilage of the ribs above them. The last two pairs are called floating ribs. These do not connect to the sternum at all. They are only attached at the back to the thoracic vertebrae. Floating ribs are smaller and provide extra protection to organs in the back, like the kidneys. At the center of the rib cage is a flat bone called the sternum, also known as the breastbone. It connects with the true ribs in front and forms the middle part of the rib cage. The rib cage plus sternum, forming a strong protective shield for the vital organs of your chest. Now let's move to the appendicular skeleton. This is the part of the skeleton that includes your limbs and the girdles that attach them to the axial skeleton. In total, it has 126 bones. First are the pectoral girdles. Each pectoral girdle is made of two bones, the clavicle in the front and the scapula at the back. Together, they attach your arms to the trunk and give flexibility of shoulder movement. Next are the upper limbs. Each arm has 30 bones. Humerus, the single long bone of the upper arm. Radius and ulna, two bones of the forearm. Carpals, eight small wrist bones, metacarpals, five bones of the palm, and phalanges, 14 finger bones. 30 bones in one arm and for two arms, 60 bones in total. Now comes the pelvic girdle. It is formed by the hip bones, which are large and strong because they support the weight of the body. The pelvic girdle attaches your lower limbs to the axial skeleton. Finally, the lower limbs. Each leg also has 30 bones. Femur, the thigh bone, the longest and strongest bone in the body. Patella, the kneecap, which protects the knee joint. Tibia and fibula, two bones of the lower leg. Tarsals, seven ankle bones. Metatarsals, five bones of the foot. And phalanges, 14 toe bones. So again, 30 bones in one leg and for two legs 60 bones in total. If you add everything, then there are 126 bones. The appendicular skeleton is all about movement. It helps you walk, run, lift, and do every activity of daily life. That's it for today's episode on the skeletal system. If you learn something new, don't forget to share this video with your friends and subscribe to BioScholar for more amazing biology lessons. Until next time, keep exploring the wonders of life.